Hello and welcome to the Robotics YouTube channel. My name is Travis Guy. I'm a robotics engineer from Toronto, but above that, I'm a maker. So I'm here today to share with you something I made, something I put a lot of love into, and that is the Leonardo Upgrade Kit for the Robotics TurtleBot 3 Waffle Pie. So what is the Leonardo Upgrade Kit? Well, I've got a TurtleBot 3 unit outfitted with my Leonardo Upgrade Kit, and it is essentially an open source, 3D printable upgrade kit that increases the modularity and user friendliness of the TurtleBot 3 platform. It's a great mod for anyone who's looking to get into modifying their robot, as it adds enclosures to the OpenCR board and Raspberry Pi unit, as well as a solid mounting points for all pieces of hardware, including the LiDAR unit. It also reimagines how the TurtleBot 3 goes together. It gives you more access to the volume inside of the robot, so you can add all types of things, whether that be uh, bigger sensors, actuators, more batteries, however you want to modify it, this kit is a great starting point for leveraging what you can really do with your TurtleBot 3 platform. So if you're interested in putting together a Leonardo upgrade kit for your TurtleBot 3 unit, you can follow the link in the description of this video and that will take you to the Robotus community project page that I have set up for this project. There you'll find all the STL files for printing out this kit, you'll also find detailed instructions on how to put it together, and you'll find all of the CAD documentation for this build itself. So if you want to customize it, add your own parts, change things, do whatever you want, all of the CAD documentation is there for you to do that. Now, before we get started on putting this build together, I want to give a thank you to Robotus for sponsoring me by sending this kit so I could put this together to share with you guys. And I want to thank them for hosting this video. So without further ado, let's get to building this robot. Before we dive into assembling the Leonardo upgrade kit for the TurtleBot 3, we're going to go over the different tools and hardware pieces you're going to need to put this all together. I've got them all laid out here on the table and we're going to go over each one so you can make sure you've got everything together before you start assembly. We're going to start with our big ticket item here. That is the TurtleBot 3 Waffle Pie Kit from Robotus. You're going to want to make sure you have the Waffle Pie version of the TurtleBot 3 as the Leonardo kit only fits the Waffle Pie. I do have a kit in development for the burger version of the TurtleBot 3. That is coming soon. Next thing you're going to need is the Waffle Pie assembly manual that comes with the kit. Uh, you're going to want to have that out as we're going to reference that several times throughout the assembly. The next thing you're going to need is the Leonardo Upgrade Kit assembly instructions. There's a PDF printable version of those on the GitHub, or you can just follow along on the README. They're the same instructions. The next thing we're going to talk about is tools. First thing you're going to need is the power drill. We're going to need an assortment of hand tools. We're going to need an adjustable wrench. We're going to need a tap wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, a set of flush cut pliers, and a couple of Allen wrenches, a two and a half millimeter and four millimeter. We're also gonna need a assortment of taps and drills. So we're gonna need an M5 tap and the corresponding 4.2 millimeter drill bit. And we're gonna need an M3 tap and the corresponding two and a half millimeter drill bit. And we're also gonna need ourselves an eighth inch American drill bit as well. Let's talk about materials. First thing here, we're gonna need a 0.5 foot micro USB cable and a one foot micro USB cable. The Waffle Pie kit does come with USB cables, however, they are the wrong size for the kit and how we're gonna upgrade things. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get a set of these. Next thing, fasteners. We've got an assortment of fasteners here. We've got some socket head cap screws and some nylon screws. Let's start with the cap screws. So you're gonna need a total of 16 M3 by eight millimeter socket head cap screws. Now, the minimum you need for this kit is 16. However, if you're gonna be adjusting things and adding stuff to your TurtleBot 3, I recommend just picking up a whole pack of these. They're perfect for attaching things to the waffle plates as there are a ton of M3 tappable holes on these plates. The next thing you're gonna need are a total of 16 M3 by 16 millimeter socket head cap screws. We're gonna need four M5 by eight millimeter socket head cap screws. And then we're gonna need some nylon screws. Now, the nylon screws are what attach our Raspberry Pi and OpenCR boards to their enclosures. So you're gonna need two M3 by 12 millimeter uh, nylon screws. And then you're gonna need about eight uh, M3 by six millimeter nylon screws. Last but not least, we have our 3D printed parts from the Leonardo Upgrade Kit. Uh, these are the parts I designed myself that make this all possible. And you can find these in the GitHub repository in the 3D printing files folder. You can just download them and pop them in your slicer and hit print. They're designed to be printed on any type of FDM type printer and with whatever material you really want. Uh, I printed these out of PLA because I like the colors. When it comes to printing, I used a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Uh, with 20% uh, infill, nothing too special, and I of course printed them on the flat side of the parts. But once you get those printed, that's about all you need. 
So I'm gonna tidy on up here and we're gonna dive into step one. Welcome to our first step. That is the post-processing of our 3D printed parts. So in the 3D printing parts file folder of the GitHub, you'll find a set of instructions on what you need to do. It is essentially you tapping 20 M3 holes in the lower enclosure halves and the LiDAR mounting bracket. You'll need an M3 tap and something to hold it with. I like to use these colleted screwdrivers because uh, you know, it adds a little dexterity when you're tapping and uh, it's only 3D printed plastic, so you don't need a whole lot of force. But when you're tapping these, I recommend starting from the bottom and going upward. It's very easy to strip out your first few threads. And if you do that on the bottom, it's not gonna really matter. Uh, you just want the threads being nice and neat on the top where it's gonna receive the screw heads uh, for putting the enclosure together. I'm gonna get started on this and uh, it's as easy as that. I'm not gonna make you watch me tap 20 holes in a row. So you can pause the video here and get your materials together and start tapping and uh, we'll meet up in the next step. Okay, step one. We need to assemble ourselves a TurtleBot 3 first layer assembly. So for this step, you're gonna need your TurtleBot 3 kit and your TurtleBot 3 waffle pie assembly manual. You're gonna follow along from pages 16 to 20 to assemble yourself a first layer assembly. I've gone ahead and assembled mine ahead of time. So you can pause the video right here, follow from pages 16 to 20, and rejoin me in step two. Welcome to step two. You'll notice not a whole lot has changed. That is because you still need your TurtleBot 3 kit and your Waffle Pie assembly manual. You're gonna follow from pages 12 to 13 and assemble yourself a Waffle Pie plate. This is the second layer assembly. After you're done assembling this, you wanna keep this. Don't attach it to your first layer yet. We're gonna use it in step three. Step three. This is where we're going to really start modifying our TurtleBot 3 units. We're going to be working with our second layer assembly. And in this step, we're going to modify six pre-existing holes and add two new ones. All the holes that we're going to be changing are marked out in our assembly manual, step three. However, I've gone ahead on my second layer assembly and marked these holes out with some washi tape ahead of time to make this whole process a little easier. Something to note, from this step onward, once we start making these holes in the second layer assembly, there is an orientation to this part. It's indicated in the assembly manual. So whenever you're modifying or working with the second layer, just make sure everything is facing the same way. With that being said, we're gonna start on our M5 drills and taps. Now you're gonna wanna make sure you're getting the right hole. Follow along on the marked out map in the instruction step and you'll be fine. Easy as that. Now we're gonna use our M5 tap, our tap wrench here. While you're tapping, you're gonna to wanna to do your best to keep it straight in both directions. It's not the end of the world if it's a bit crooked. Well, I see I'm not perfect myself, but it's a thin hole, won't take too much effort. And once it starts spinning freely, you can just back it on out of there. So once you're done with your M5 tap, set that aside. We're gonna to move to the other side of the layer two assembly and we're gonna work on our M3 holes. So this is where we're gonna actually have to add some brand new holes to the TurtleBot 3 waffle plate. However, we're gonna do something first. We're actually gonna tap the first two holes and we're gonna use our uh, enclosure bottom here as a template to drill our other holes. One of the nice things about the TurtleBot waffle pie plate is all of the small holes you see are ready to receive an M3 tap. So you don't even have to do any pre-drilling before you start. So I'm just gonna tap these and again, just as straight as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just about right. The uh, collet screwdriver is really handy for these small holes, especially in plastic. You know, you can use a little too much force when you use the tap handle. So I really like this tool for doing this. Wow, this is a forearm workout. A little tired from those 20 holes earlier. And we are through, okay. So here is where we are going to temporarily install our uh, lower enclosure half so that we can uh, use it as a template to mark our next holes. You can measure if you want, but it's a little easier to use this as a template. Let's install our enclosure assembly. It only goes on one way. It's an asymmetrical part. I'll line it up with our holes. Let's get our M3 screws here and we can start assembling. Okay. So, as you can see, this is gonna act as a template so we can find our other holes. All we have to do is switch over to our 2.5 millimeter drill bit. And we're just gonna spot them. 
So I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, there's one. Let's turn this around. And there is two. Hard part is over. So now to tap these, I'm gonna take the enclosure half back off. That guy can chill over there. Look at that. Two brand new holes. Didn't even have to measure. Let's tap these last couple of holes. Okay, and we're through. Oh, and we are done. Okay, so we proceed to our next step. Okay, step four. Nothing too complicated with this step. We're just gonna be adding some more holes to our second layer assembly. These holes are going to be for adding some standoffs to adjust the way the third layer attaches to the second layer. To get started on this, all you need is your 1 8 inch drill bit and your drill. We're gonna be making clearance holes for some M3 screws. Now I've gone ahead and marked my holes out ahead of time with some washi tape. But you can just follow along in the instructions and it'll tell you exactly where to make the holes. And you just get to it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the standoffs we need and the holes we just made. So you can take your 45 millimeter standoffs that come with your kit and your 16 millimeter M3 screws and uh, start installing. I'm just gonna peel off my washi tape here. You're also gonna need a adjustable wrench so you can make sure you get your uh, standoffs nice and tight. Just put them on finger tight first. It's probably the quickest way to do it. We're putting the standoffs in the center of the board rather than the standard design which puts the standoffs on the outside of the board. And that's so that we have more access on our between our third and second layers of this assembly. So once you got them finger tight, grab your adjustable wrench. You are gonna to wanna to make sure you get them nice and tight at this step before proceeding to the next, as this is the last time you'll have convenient access to these specific screw heads. So, get each one of them nice and snug so it doesn't move around. And it is as simple as that. Okay, so our second layer assembly is now ready to go onto the first layer assembly. Okay, step five. So this is when things start coming together. We're gonna to be attaching our second layer assembly to our first layer assembly from earlier. You're gonna need a few things to do this. Firstly, you're gonna need your cat bowl full of M3 by eight millimeter screws, and you're gonna need your LiPo extension cable for your battery from your TurtleBot 3 kit. Before we go attaching our second layer to our first layer, we gotta route some cables. The instructions tell you what needs to be routed where, but with the battery cable, you're gonna route the plug end through this first rectangular hole like so. Then you're gonna Let's be a little bit of balancing here. You're gonna attach it to your battery. Finally, before we put things down, we're gonna take the motor cables from the first layer assembly and we're gonna route those up through the central hole like so. Now that everything is routed correctly, now we can start fastening our plates together. Now this is why I really like these little M3 cap screws. They make assembly so convenient. And you're just gonna take 12 of these and uh, Make your way around the perimeter where you've installed those standoffs on the first layer assembly. You can use the M3 hardware that comes with the TurtleBot kit. It's up to you. I personally like the way the socket head cap screws look as well. Handy tool to get yourself for this is a ball end Allen wrench. It makes uh, turning in little screws like this a lot quicker. Okay, and that is all 12. And would you look at that? It's coming along, right? So now we've got our first layer assembly attached to our second layer assembly. We can start adding some more stuff to this. So we're gonna head on to the next step and get going. Step six. So this is where we're gonna start taking our control boards, assembling them into our enclosures and attaching them to our main assembly. One thing we have to do before we get started, if you have a brand new Raspberry Pi board, we're gonna have to actually modify the holes to receive an M3 sized screw. All you need for that is your drill and your eighth inch drill bit. You're going to want to be gentle while you do this, and you're going to enlarge the exterior mounting holes. And 
That is all done. We'll put our drill back over here. All right, let's bring this on into the center here. Easiest way to start is to start attaching our enclosure lower halves to the assembly. This one uses the M3 screw, so let me install this on the board here. Let's line them up with the holes we made earlier. Okay, that's all nice and snug. Now we can take our Raspberry Pi lower enclosure piece and install it on the side with the M5 screws. Now, these parts are only designed to go on one way, so you don't have to worry about installing anything backwards. And would you look at that? All right, so we've got our enclosure lower halves installed on the main assembly. Now we can take our boards and our nylon screws and start assembling. With the OpenCR board, what I recommend doing is attaching the LiPo extension cable that you routed earlier to the board itself. So we just have to plug that on, just like that. And then you can set that down into the enclosure on the mount points. Grab yourself your nylon screws and your Phillips head screwdriver. And we can just install these nice and neat. We just need enough tightness to hold this in place. And that's it for our OpenCR board. That's nice and snug. Let's get our Raspberry Pi installed. That just pops into here. Nice and neat. A few more nylon screws and we'll be done. And we are done. Take a look at that. Our assembly is coming together. So we're gonna go to the next step. Step seven. What we're gonna be doing in this step is making some connections to our OpenCR board and our Raspberry Pi board. And as well, we're gonna be installing our Bluetooth receiver on the physical assembly itself. First step of step seven is to connect our motor connections to our OpenCR board. We are gonna be using the first two motor ports of the OpenCR board, and it is very important to connect the correct motor to the correct port. The assembly instructions detail which motor is which. This is motor ID one, this is motor ID two. And as so, ID one connects to port one and ID two connects to port two. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you got your cables separated and in the right spots. I'm gonna take motor ID one here and connect it to port one. Now, these can be a little finicky, so just be patient as you connect them. But once they snap in, you're good to go. Okay, so that's ID1 connected to port one. Now we're gonna connect ID2 to port two. Okay, we are connected. The next thing we're gonna do with the OpenCR board is plug in our Bluetooth module. We're gonna attach that physically later, but for now we're just gonna make the connection. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the receiver. It is the one not labeled master. The master goes with the controller. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this port into the last port right here. The detailed instructions tell you which port to connect them to. Let's make this connection. Okay, and this guy's just gonna chill out there for a minute. So if you plan on using the Raspberry Pi camera with your TurtleBot 3, uh, I'm gonna recommend that you install the ribbon cable for the camera right now. Your kit comes with two ribbon cables. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the longer version. That's what's gonna you know, get the camera in the right spot when we come to assemble it. When it comes to attaching this, if you have the TurtleBot in this orientation, the blue strip faces away from you as you connect it to the camera port. So I'm gonna plug that in. You just push it into the port and then snap down the connector on the outside. It should be nice and snug once you're done. And we're just gonna leave that to sit there while we do our next step. Last thing to do is connect this little Bluetooth module to our assembly physically. What I'm gonna do is turn around the turtle bot. Now there are three holes located next to this rectangular slot that are perfect for installing this module. What we're gonna use is the small black rivets from your TurtleBot 3 kit. And the way these work is they come up on the underside of the plate and sit in the hole, and then you snap the piece on top. The easiest way to do this is stick it on your finger there, come up through the bottom. Okay, that's one in the first hole. You're gonna skip a hole and go to the last one with your second rivet. Again, stick it to my finger, bring it underneath. 
and up through the hole. Once you're done, you can just snap your Bluetooth module down onto them and press up from the bottom and you'll hear them click into place. That's one, that's two. So now our Bluetooth module is nicely attached right there. Uh, the excess wire can be neatly tucked into that little rectangular hole to keep our assembly nice and neat. So I'm gonna just do that right now. The wire is a bit stiff, but once you get it down to that hole, nice and neat. That concludes step seven. We're gonna move on to step eight. Step eight, what we're gonna be doing in step eight is attaching our enclosure tops and as well making a power connection between the OpenCR board and the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing we're gonna start with is the enclosure case for the Raspberry Pi. So what you're gonna do is get it facing the right way, thread your ribbon cable through the slot in the top here, all the way through. Okay, then you're gonna need your M3 by 16 millimeter socket head cap screws, and they are gonna feed in to the counter bores on the top. Now when you're tightening these up, don't go too tight, as again, it's just uh, tapped 3D printed parts. So just nice and snug to keep the enclosure lid on. Okay, now there's one step to make before we put the OpenCR enclosure board on, and that is to connect the five volt power supply cable between the OpenCR board and the Raspberry Pi. On the OpenCR side, it's very easy to connect. You're just going to connect it to the five volt output port with the five volt pin. It only plugs in one way. That's nice and connected. Here comes the part where you're gonna to want to pay attention to how you're plugging this into the Raspberry Pi. The positive lead connects to pin four and the negative lead connects to pin six of the Raspberry Pi uh, GPIO headers. If you are confused about which headers are which, you can refer to page 23 of your Waffle Pi assembly manual and it will give you a diagram of how to connect it. So I'm gonna make that connection now. I'm just gonna go across under here and we are gonna make that connection and we're gonna double check. Yep, positive connected to four, negative connected to six. So you're really gonna to wanna to make sure you've got that correct because you don't wanna send power into the wrong section of the Raspberry Pi. With that connected, we can now take our enclosure top for the OpenCR board and connect that. So when you're putting this down, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're not pinching any of the wires between the enclosure case. There's a few more wires on this one than on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Once you've got it in place, you can put in your socket screws. Okay, and boom. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. It's looking pretty snazzy. So we can move on to the next step. Step nine. In step nine, we're gonna be working on our third layer assembly. It's a real simple step. We're just gonna be putting together a couple of the waffle pie plates and tapping a few holes in them to get them ready for the next step. So first thing you wanna do is put your plates together like so. All right. Now we're gonna install some fasteners in these, but we're only gonna install them on one side. And from this point on, there's going to be an orientation as indicated in the step nine image. You're just gonna use the standard M3 hardware from your waffle pie kit for putting together your waffle plates. So you just need a little nut and a screw. Get my Phillips head out here and put these together. So now that the plates are together, and again, these two holes should be empty and these two holes should have your fasteners, we're gonna switch over to our M3 tap and tap the holes to receive our LiDAR mount. All right, now I've gone ahead and marked these out with washi tape ahead of time, but the step nine graphic shows you exactly where to put the holes. And these are the handy M3 ready holes, so you don't even have to drill them. We just have to put the tap in them. I think this is the last bit of tapping you're gonna have to do for the kit. Oh, <laughs> and again, as straight as you can, but if it's a bit crooked, don't worry about it. Okay, and we're through. With your waffle plates assembled and your holes tapped, we can proceed to the next step. Step 10, what we're gonna be doing is attaching our LiDAR driver module to the bottom of our third layer assembly. So what you're gonna need for this is of course your third layer assembly, your driver module, the adapter plate for the driver module, some M3 nuts from the kit, and you're gonna need your two M3 by 12 millimeter nylon screws. 
The first thing for this step, we're going to put together our little module assembly. You're gonna take your adapter plate, put the holes of this board over the center holes of the adapter. Then you're gonna drop in your M3 by 12 millimeter nylon screws, like so. This guy can just chill out over here. Then we're gonna grab our layer three assembly. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is pay attention to the orientation on the underside. The step 10 image shows the board flipped over and tells you which side is the front. The reason we left these two fastener holes uh, open is that we're going to actually install the module through those holes. What we're going to do now is grab our two M3 nuts and we're going to hold those on the top side in the little pockets. All right, you can just hold them on there with your fingers. And then you're going to grab your LiDAR module assembly that you put together earlier. Oh, don't drop it, Travis. Got it. Again, orientation matters in this step, so I'm gonna pay attention to my own instructions. You're gonna to wanna to have the micro USB port facing away from the front as indicated in the step 10 diagram. I'm gonna place this on like so. We're gonna feed the screws into the holes. Then we're just gonna grab our Phillips head and tighten it on up. As you tighten this up, you're going to feel the uh, bottom of the screws protrude through the top surface. That is okay, that is why we also have some flush cut pliers and we're just gonna trim off the excess once you get it tight. So once you have it installed, it should be like this. And then for the excess, just grab your flush cut pliers and trim it off. Uh, be sure to be wearing some eye protection when you do this. That went flying. Okay, and now you have two nice and flush mounts you got your LiDAR module installed on the bottom. The reason we are doing this is so that when we want to take apart our third layer assembly, we don't have to worry about our LiDAR module being stuck to the second layer as with the original TurtleBot 3. This allows you to just unhook the micro USB cable and take away your third layer nice and tidy. With that being done, you're ready to proceed to the next step. Step 11, what we're gonna be doing is attaching our LiDAR bracket to our third layer assembly. The only thing you have to keep in mind for this step is that the front of the LiDAR bracket should be facing the front of the assembly. I'm gonna grab our bracket, put it over the holes we tapped earlier. You're gonna grab your M3 by eight millimeter screws. We're just gonna fasten it in. And we are done. We can go to the next step. Step 12, we're moving right along here. What we're gonna be doing is attaching our LiDAR module to our third layer assembly. However, before we can do that, we need to enlarge the mounting holes of the LiDAR unit itself to accept an M3 fastener. So to do that, all we need is our trusty 1 8 drill bit and a surface to drill on. So I'm gonna enlarge these holes. All right, it's as easy as that. So we can set our drill to the side here, clean up our holes a little. We are now ready to mount this piece to our third layer assembly. So what you're gonna to wanna to do as you attach the LiDAR unit is route the data cable through the open rectangular hole beneath the mount. So we're gonna pass that on through and attach the module. This is so that we can connect the data cable to the driver board on the bottom that we assembled in the previous step. To fasten this down, we just need our M3 by 16 millimeter screws and our two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. So let's fasten this down. Okay, that is secured. We're gonna to want to, before we proceed to the next step, connect our data communication cable. All you have to do is plug it in on the bottom side. So there you have it, a complete layer three assembly for the Leonardo upgrade kit. And what we have is our LiDAR module completely secured to one layer. So it's nice and modular and you can easily take it and put it onto our assembly. We'll proceed to the next step. Step 13, this is where we are going to finally attach our third layer assembly to the main assembly we've been working on thus far. That's a really easy step. All we're gonna do is use four M3 by eight millimeter socket screws to attach it to the standoffs that we installed in our previous steps. All you have to do is place the assembly over the standoffs 
and you'll see it'll line up with holes evenly on the waffle plates. And then you just pop in your fasteners. Nice and easy. And it is as simple as that. We are nearly there. We can proceed to the next step where we're going to attach the Raspberry Pi camera module. Okay, step 14, this is an optional step for those who wish to use the Raspberry Pi camera module that came with their TurtleBot 3 kit. So for this step, you're gonna need an assembled Raspberry Pi camera module on its bracket assembly, and you're gonna need to connect that to the ribbon cable that you installed in the Raspberry Pi unit earlier. I've gone ahead and done these steps ahead of time to make it a little easier. You can refer to page 30 of your assembly manual for all the steps necessary to get this together. If you wanna attach this to your assembly, you're gonna to have to take your third layer back off. I've gone ahead and loosened some of the screws already. So we're just gonna take this last one off. To attach it to our third layer, you're going to use two two and a half millimeter by 12 millimeter screws and their corresponding two and a half millimeter nuts. Uh, these come from the TurtleBot 3 kit. So once we take it off, all we have to do is find the two two and a half millimeter holes on the front of the assembly and line those up with the holes on the bracket assembly itself. Now these are pretty small screws and nuts, so it can be a bit tedious, but just Stay patient and you'll get it. Okay, I've got those two connected, like so. I'm gonna bring the nuts over here. Just like that. All right, then I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna grab our Phillips head screwdriver and get these tight. Now, they're tiny little screws, so you just need to get them nice and snug. You don't even need a wrench for the bottom side. And there you go. Our camera module is now attached to the front of our third layer assembly. When you go to put this back on, make sure to feed your ribbon cable through the two standoffs at the front. And you can place this back down and pop your screws back in. Once you have your screws back on, you can tidy it up by feeding the ribbon cable back underneath here. And there you go, you've got your Raspberry Pi camera module attached to the third layer, and you're ready to proceed to the last step. Okay, step 15, congratulations on making it to the very end. It's a real simple step. All we have to do is make our USB connections between the Raspberry Pi and the LiDAR driver board, and the Raspberry Pi and the OpenCR board. We're gonna start with our 0.5 foot micro USB cable. We're gonna plug this in to one of the last ports here of the Raspberry Pi. And then we're gonna look underneath and you'll see on the third layer where you installed that driver board module. And you're gonna plug the micro USB cord into the port on the bottom side. Nice and neat and it connects on the underside just like that. Our last connection is our one foot micro USB cable. And that's gonna go from the other port on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. That's gonna to connect to our OpenCR board. Now, what you can do to make things a little neater is you can route the cable through the open rectangular holes on the bottom here. So you just slide it through on one side, slide it back through on the other side. That just helps keep it nice and neat. Then we can plug in our micro USB cable. Okay, we are now fully connected. That is one fully upgraded TurtleBot 3 unit. Congratulations on completing your Leonardo kit. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope that my Leonardo upgrade kit can be an asset to you in your adventures with your TurtleBot 3 platform and in robotics in general. So before I go, I just want to say remember to check out the Robotics community page as it is a great source of information, inspiration, and if you just want to share a project that you're working on, it's a great place to do that. My project along with many others are hosted there and it's a great place to share. Also, I just want to thank Robotus again for hosting and sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys next time in my upcoming video on a similar upgrade kit for the burger version of the TurtleBot 3. I've had that in development for quite some time. So in the meantime, you can catch me on the Robotus community page or on my Instagram at travisguy.exe. Once again, my name's Travis. Thanks for watching.